What's going on, ladies and gents? Lunch Learning Live, January 22nd. I do want to say I immediately realized what I did, which is I went live in the wrong group again. And it turns out I'm pretty good at that. Just like clicking the wrong button, just so fast. Um, let me go ahead and click Mark as announcement. Let me go ahead and bring this up. I don't know why my internet is deciding to be all sorts of um, finicky today as it always is despite me getting a new provider, a new plan and blah, blah, blah. I'm just assuming it's the universe's way of trying to keep me humble, but I'm super psyched and I'm super happy that everybody's joining us today. We're gonna be talking about something really darn interesting, which ultimately at the core um, is leveraging uh, assets, creating assets and putting yourself in a position so that you can be as omni-channel as you can about the people you wanna target, people that you wanna serve in exchange for money. Um, and I'm going to be showing you exactly what I'm doing, how I'm doing, because ultimately you've been seeing it. And I think it's a strategy that you guys can use as a mini marketing agency using uh, the big business billion dollar secrets type of approach. And I'm pretty sure by the end of our session today, whether it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour or however long you're tuning in, I think you're going to find a very clear and complete strategy on how to do and what to do so that you can really spend maybe, let's just say, 60 minutes or maybe even two hours and come out with uh, an entire month's worth of good stuff, stuff that's leverageable into Instagram videos, Facebook ads, testimonials, case studies, proof, interviews, books, lead magnets, all the fun stuff. And it's the same thing I'm actually doing now with you guys and you've been experiencing it. So you realize how powerful it is. Um, and by the end of it, you're going to be able to, to understand it at a higher level and do it and have a good time. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, add the click-ins and all that fun stuff. Uh, let's go add to broadcast. Let's type this in, lunch, learn, and live. There we go. And this is January 22. And hopefully by the end of this session, you're going to be, like I mentioned before, but in, in a really cool position to be doing this consistently, frequently, repeatedly, um, and put yourself in a position where like, you just have to do it once, and then you can target your dream clients again and again and again and get them to KLT you pretty darn fast. But in the meantime, let me just go and say hellos and high fives to everybody who's just joining us. We've got Lenny Ramirez and Jonathan Faridian. Totally ruined that, but Lenny, what's going on? How you doing? David Getzinger, Keegan Brown, Sean Frank, Rob Beal, Langdon James, Tasha Taylor, Hassan Muhammad, Manel Castello Bronco. Branco? Yeah, dude, if I was better at my job, I'd probably be pronouncing names correctly, but I just having trouble with that. Um, but like I mentioned before, I think this is going to be a pretty cool thing because you guys have been experiencing this. And I really hope that you can you can see how powerful it is and talk about leveraging assets and time and all that fun stuff. Um, so we'll go ahead and get this party started. Today, we're going to be talking about how I leverage 60 minutes of work into about eight different formats and reach an audience 10 times bigger and you, how you guys can do it pretty easily and pretty quickly. And just being honest and authentic with you and yourself, you don't have to pretend to be an expert. You don't have to like bang your, or bump your chest or whatever, like Jordan Belford and, and Grant Cardone do with their YouTube channels where they're just like, I'm the best, I'm the best. You don't have to say that at all. Um, I do wanna say also that the IC is reopening today for five more people. So if you're interested in taking a next step of the inner circle and seeing how we're getting awesome results, including stuff that you see on the Mad Congrats post and the emails and the Facebook ads and all that fun stuff, just hashtag IC. And um, Brett, my number two, reach out. Uh, he's pretty cool with all this fun stuff. Uh, you're not the first person he's talked to. He knows the dance and you can really come in with a, I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure if this is a good fit for me or even like, yeah, let's go. Um, if you're interested in, in having a further one-on-one -on -one conversation, just hashtag IC and Brett Factor X. Uh, he's my number two with all this fun stuff. I'll make sure you're taking care of answering any questions, all the fun stuff, because I just simply don't have the time. Um, what's going on, Steve Aquino, Wayne Terez, Kyle McCarthy, uh, Pascal Lon LaFord, LaFond, sorry, we'll get there. But yeah, ladies and gents, let's get this party started. So this is, oops, let me do this. So this is how I leverage 60 minutes of work um, into eight different formats and reach an audience 10 times bigger. And, and you can do this too. And I want to say that this is for a specific type of person. This is for somebody like this is for a person 
that can do the following. The first, have a 60 minute conversation with another person. If you can do this, you can take a next step. If you cannot have a 60 minute conversation with another person, and I'm not kidding, some people can't have a real thorough 60 minute conversation with another person, then you know this isn't for you. But if you can talk and have a back and forth with another person, this is something that you can do. The second thing, uh, the second type of person that this is for, someone that can spend five to $10 a day on making sure their target market sees them, hears them, and is worth watching. Five to $10 a day. So you have to emotionally and, and financially commit to $150 to $300 a month to make sure that your target market sees you, hears you, and is ultimately worth watching you. If, if it's not, if you can't do that, then this probably won't happen. The third thing, this is for somebody that wants to be successful and is willing to do the doing part. And this is actually the third and most powerful thing. There's a difference between a desire and an interest. If somebody's interested in doing a thing, I'm interested in talking about a house. I'm interested in talking about a car. I'm interested in, in talking about Facebook ad stuff. That's different than a desire. An interest is like, I'm going to dip my toe in the pool. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe we'll figure it out. But a desire is I desire that house. I desire that car. I desire to be successful. You have to want and, and ultimately desire to be successful this. And, and ultimately, you're willing to do the doing part. I don't want people to be interested in going to the gym. I want people desiring the results and the life of a six pack. I don't want people interested in eating healthy. I want people who are desire to live longer. That's the difference. So this third sentence is ultimately you have to desire everything that we're talking about and the impact of everything we're talking about. This won't work if you're just interested. I mean, you can watch a lunch and learn, but you're not going to get your intended results if you're just interested in. And ultimately, everything that I've been doing with this strategy is something that you guys have been experiencing time and time again. And, and this strategy, by the way, like it just really works. Like the, the, the bar is so low when it comes to modern day economy, when it comes to online advertising, when it comes to online relationships, like, like it's so easy to just ghost and disappear that when you run to somebody who doesn't actively try to screw you, like it's just mind blowing, like absolutely mind blowing. And if you are willing to be that person where you're not actively trying to screw somebody, not trying to ghost, you can really be massively successful in this space and in this industry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline um, all the different ways a real life person reads, consumes, and is interested, well, reads, consumes, and becomes interested in working with you. And you being a non-flighty, non-ghosty, I'm not going to try to screw you type person. So let's just say in the middle, this is a real life person that is interested and, and has a desire. Uh, they're reading about you. They're consuming information. They, they might be interested in having an honest dollar-driven relationship with you. Here's all the different ways somebody can consume the message that you're trying to send out. And, and there's a lot, and it's insane. And this is really a function of like modern day times and modern day economies. Like when you think like way back in the day when like, I don't know, like Ben Franklin, right? That was the dude that really industrialized the printing press, I think, right? Like what was that, the 1700s? When they did the printing press, right? You had a newspaper. That was it. Like if you just nailed being in the newspaper, like that was where everybody was looking. And it really wasn't that big of a deal. Like, all right, so we put an article in the newspaper and our job is done. Newspapers still exist today. Some target clients and some target customers still value this. So I'm going to put it on here. But this is really part of my effort to show you that like the, the transformation that's happened over the past 200 years, more so in the past 5, 10, or even 15 years. So there was a newspaper and then there became television. And way back in the day, TV was just one channel that was only on for two or three hours a day and everybody watched it. So you had newspaper and TV. So if you're on newspaper in the 1700s, you were everywhere. If you're on newspaper and TV in the 1950s, you were everywhere. It was great, right? But then there was radio. And I know my timeline is weird, but now we got newspaper, TV, and radio. So somebody who wants to communicate an honest, dollar-driven relationship with a real-life person, 
Um, and if somebody wants to read and consume what you're doing and how you're doing it, now you got to buy a TV, radio, newspaper, which is honestly a lot. Like you could spend your whole life as a provider of information, as a person that's trying to outreach and market and advertise, just doing one of these three. And now you've got three to pick, right? And if you're not on all three, you're probably losing the fight. But that's okay. No big deal because then they invented billboards, which is like a big box of frustration because now billboards uh, are, are another way and it's another reminder. And if, if you're not there, then like you're already losing the fight. So at first it was one, then it was two, three, now it's four, right? But that's okay because from like the 1700s to the 1950s, you really only had four. I mean, maybe if you want to say newspaper magazine, you had five, right? And I know that you can make an argument that like newspaper had like 10 different offshoots, magazine 10 different offshoots. Like, like let's just pretend that's not an option. Like, but like in the 80s, it was like newspaper, TV, magazine, radio, billboard. Okay, five, right? My limited time, my limited budget, five. And by the way, you can't just take a radio ad and put a newspaper. You can't take newspaper and put it on TV. It's 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 just different, but but okay. Like we can do it. And then the internet came around and ruined everything. Like literally ruined everything because now you've got blogs and now you've got SEO and now you've got uh, Facebook and now you've got uh, Facebook ads and then there's Instagram and then there's uh, TikTok, which is a thing now. I just started experiencing that. That's really strange. Um, and then there's, oops. And then there's WhatsApp. And then there's, uh, what's it called? Um, banner ads. And then it goes on and on and on. Like, like there's, they're just, they're everywhere. There's like a million of them now. And it's, it's insane. Like there's no way to keep up with like all of this because way back in the day you could say, all right, well, at least we'll do like a magazine ad and a TV ad and a radio ad, but there, there's no way to handle the now 50 different ways somebody could read and consume and become interested in working with you. It's like, it's nearly impossible, right? I didn't even mention LinkedIn. I didn't even mention YouTube. Like there are just so effing many and there's a new one every day. And sometimes you're wrong. Like remember when Periscope was a thing? That's out. Remember when Vine was a thing? That's out. Remember when Twitter was a thing? That's dying. Remember like how organic on Facebook, your newsfeed? That's gone now, it's all groups. Like, like it's almost impossible to actively keep up with the new fangled thing. I tried this, it didn't work because I was trying to do the following. I was trying to make a message that was unique to every single communication channel. Got burnt out, got destroyed, not able to keep up. It's not going to happen. And somebody in the comments says, like, you forgot direct mail. Exactly. Like, there's just so many. I mean, you can even do voicemail drops, text message campaigns. Like, oh, my God, like, this is insane. And what I was trying to do was make a message that was unique to every single communication channel. And you know what? It was a recipe. For failure it was not gonna happen maybe if i focused on one maybe if i focused on two but like this is not gonna happen and the rules change all the time like youtube three years ago was about like cool motivational videos and now it's all about clips of whatever tv show you watched on netflix like oh my god right this is insane and so it was a recipe for failure my attention was split it wasn't going to happen. And this was about two years ago. I was like, I was having like my first mini like realization epiphany moment. We ended up realizing not only was a recipe for failure, but this isn't a, or I should say that this is a common problem that other people have already figured out. Like the answer is out there. The answer just wasn't in me. And so I, what I did is I looked at companies like Apple. Like Apple really does what's called omni-channel, which is like they do everything. They just, they say, screw it, we're going to do everything. We're going to do direct mail and we're going to do stores and we're going to do retail and we're going to do um, 
channel marketing. That's when you advertise to the people that sell your stuff on your behalf. So they will advertise on behalf of and for Best Buy. You can see the sponsored ads and they're gonna do bus stops, they're gonna do billboards, they're gonna do Instagram, they're gonna, they're gonna do, Apple decided to do everything. What was interesting, when Apple decided to do everything, and whether it's like Apple or any other billion dollar company, when a billion dollar company decides to do everything, they didn't go custom. They didn't recreate every single ad and every single channel and every sing single communication. They didn't go custom. They went leveraged. You'll notice that the ad on the billboards of US1 are pictures highlighting someone that took a picture with their iPhone. It's the same ad that they talk about in their stores. And when they shoot their keynote, they take clips of that and advertise it on Spotify. When they get somebody saying, this is the best iPhone ever, they just take a screenshot and put it on Facebook. Instead of going custom, they went leveraged. And I just realized I forgot Snapchat as well, right? They didn't go custom, they went leveraged. That's what I wanted to do. Because when you go leveraged, you can shoot one thing, use it five, 10, or even 100 times. And I want to really pull back my secrets here and show you guys that it's possible. Here's what I've been doing to leverage. This is something that you guys can do again and again and again. And this is something that we just talked about in my elite program. This is something that people are charging anywhere between $30,000 and $75,000 to walk somebody through the process of. This is literally a 30 to $75,000 strategy. And you guys can do it here. In my own iteration of this, everything starts with a 60 minute interview. And you guys have been seeing me do my 60 minute interviews. I do them every Thursday. We just did one with Jeff Lopez. We did one with Robert Vico. We did one with Jimmy Rutowski. We did one with Christine stuff. Just a 60 minute interview. That's it. Now, every single person here is doing these 60 minute interviews, but they aren't doing them leveraged. They are simply talking for 60 minutes. They aren't recording them. They aren't phrasing correctly. They aren't having bullet points. They're just kind of talking. And what's interesting is Apple, when they shoot their stuff, they don't just talk. When billion dollar companies do their marketing, they don't just say, let's do it and see what happens. They have a structure and thought process behind it because if they do that, they can chop it up and have a good time. So what I've been doing is I chop up my 60 minute interview. And you guys have been seeing me do this time and time again. And if, everyone's, and if anyone here has followed me on Instagram, you can see me leveraging. Look. These are all my 60 minute interviews. I'm just using them again and again and again. This is the same thing that you guys can do. You should be doing an interview with your clients, an interview with the people that you serve, an interview with people in your industry. I don't care what you're doing or what you're talking about. You're going to have some good bullet points. But I've been doing this time and time and time again. I am leveraging these 60 minute interviews. On average, each 60 minute interview gets me five to six clips all the way through. All I'm doing is taking this five to six minute clip, or sorry, the 60 minute interview and turning it five to six letterbox videos. That's it. Now with the 60 minute interview, I've done the following. The first, I've connected with someone smarter than me. I've learned directly from them. Let's do this correctly. Come on. I've taken care of my group, just like this right here. And I can now take this 60 minute interview and upload it to YouTube. Cool. Right? Oh, by the way, I can also um, upload it to my Facebook page. And these five to six letterbox videos, um, 
I can give them to my interviewee as a thank you. I can use this to attract more interviewees. I can then run them as ads. I have leveraged a 60 minute conversation where we're just talking shop. You guys have seen it. And now I've taken care of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different assets and different ways and different channels. Pretty darn fast. I can take the 60 minute interview and run, run them as an ad on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. I can even, by the way, export the audio and use it as a podcast. There you go. And if you guys want to have even more fun, you can do the following. Oh, let me not show that. Hold on. You can do the following. You can pay someone to take the interviews and well, you can turn it into a book just like this. Imagine if you interviewed one dentist every single week for 10 weeks in a row, and all you did was learn directly from them, record it, you made them famous, you got famous, and now you know what you can do? You can pay someone or even do it yourself and turn these interviews into a book. I didn't spend a year trying to write my book. I just interviewed people smarter than me. And then I turned it into a book. And each time I did this, by the way, I nearly have, I was going to say limited assets. It's not true. Like this is literally leverageable assets. And maybe this is a derivative of the 64 pieces of content by Gary V. I'm not quite sure. I don't follow him as much as I could, but the idea is leverageable. And I remember originally reading and hearing about this uh, by somebody who brought it up to me at, as a, a function, as, as a result of Peng Jun talking about it leverageable content strategy. I'm not really sure, but you can see time and time again, like these are just the text versions of my interviews. This guy's an actual dentist. We did an interview. He shared with me the challenge that dentists had. So I created an offer for dentists. Look, that's Shane talking about real estate. Now I know how to have a conversation with real estate agencies and real estate agents. And then I just send him and then I get a referral fee. Like you can see it time and time again. What's even cooler is I added this, or sorry, I ended up using what's called the two-step for everybody in here. Like you all have been on the receiving end of this. I created a two-step post. I said, hey, we just did an interview with Danny Velez. Here's the expert secrets. I'm going to see if I can bring it up right now. Here we go. I then put up what's called the two-step. I said, hey, if you're interested in getting the, the show notes from the Danny, Lo uh, Danny Velez soap opera sequence, it's all right here. This was a dictation of the interview. Y'all should be doing this because with a single 60-minute interview, I have taken care of about 90% of all of this. Now I've got my book, I've got my blog, we've got SEO, we've got ads, I can put this stuff on radio or podcast. I have a screenshot. Hell, we can even turn it into a newspaper article if you wanted to. All because of a 60 minute interview. Now, I'm sure some people are saying like, but what does that 60 minute interview look like? Like, what are you supposed to say? How are you supposed to say all that fun stuff? It's not as hard as you think. This is how you do your 60 minute interview. Hey, I'm going to start a podcast and interview show highlighting successful people in X industry, carpet cleaners, dentists, bike shop owners, small business owners, whatever. If you're up for it, it should and could give you some Awesome publicity, share some blank, and I'll even turn it into letterbox videos you can use for any PR and marketing. Interested? 
That's it. That's all you have to say. Now, that's what I said in the beginning when you look at like the interview of Andrew Page and Jamie Eldridge. There was a the infant version of this, but that's all you got to do. And so if I really wanted to develop content and assets for dental ads or for my um, content and assets to build KLT and make people realize I'm not going to screw them over. I'm not a fly by night organization. I'm not that agency, right? Um, I would go up to uh, dentists that do marketing. Hey, are you a dentist that do your marketing? Hey, I'm starting a podcast highlighting successful people in the dental industry. If you're up for it, it should and give you some awesome publicity, share some interesting tidbits, and even turn a letterbox videos you can use for your PR marketing. Are you interested? Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Great. Just have to ask 5, 10, 15 people. Let's say half of them say no or ghost you. You've still got two, three, or even four weeks worth of interviews. And now you've got this set up and then you can pay or do it yourself. You can take that 60 minute interview, run it on your page. You can chop them up and do letterbox videos. You can put it on YouTube. I mean, you can see it again and again and again. And the coolest part, by the way, is like, if you're interviewing enough dentists, you'll learn what they hate about Facebook ad agencies. And then all of a sudden you launch an agency that does what they want with all the stuff that they hate. More importantly, you've learned something directly from them, which is probably their tribal language. So you don't come off as that agency, right? I mean, you can even like probably start a dentist group where you're just like talking about dentist ads. That's it. You can even give the letterbox videos to your interviewee as a thank you. You can even, let's do this right here. transcribe or turn it into a book and then give it to the interviewer. I mean, you can see again and again and again. And what's really interesting, by the way, is that I've been doing this. Let's see if I can't show you this stuff, but like I've been doing this since day one in this group. And this is the fundamental core reason why a group of only 40,000 people has engagement rates and value drops and value bombs bigger than groups with 103,000 people. And I know because I've been in groups with 103,000 people and everybody's trying to screw each other or PM or DM and everybody's just waiting for the person to come on board and, and sell them a thing. And everybody's saying, oh, what else is there? And, and your engagement disappears and people are underserved. Guys, like my group is fucking awesome because of this right here. I think you guys can do the same and you can best serve and best fit your target clients and customers simply by starting with this strategy. And within what, like five interviews, you've got what a 15 page lead magnet that you can then use to run it as ads. And you can use that to collect Name, number, and email from your target dream audience. And they're not going to feel like you're scammy or spammer or talking about the same thing again. It's something unique and something different. It's because of this strategy right here. And I don't know if it's fair to say it's the Gary Vee strategy or the Peng Jun strategy or the content replication strategy, whatever it is. It's because of this. And now I don't have to earn gray hairs trying to keep up with modern day times. Instead, I'm just more than happy and willing to share the spotlight with somebody smarter than me. And now you guys don't have to rely on me for expertise. Instead, you can rely on the tribe and the community and the culture, which is 10 million, a billion times more powerful. It's because of this. So if you want to build something that matters and something that, that you can have an honest, dollar-driven relationship with and ultimately like build a better skill set, just start doing something like this. You could talk to dentists that do their marketing. You could talk to carpet cleaners. You could talk to bike shops, car washes, anything. And if you want even more fun, talk to dentists that do implants. And there you go, again and again and again. And it doesn't really matter if you pick a niche or not, because now your lead magnet is really just like small business owners talk about marketing. And now you've got a podcast, right? And now you've got lead magnets right? And books. I'm trying to figure out where my book is actually. Like it's somewhere on this shelf and I don't even know where it is. You probably all see my gray hairs. Like 
I've got a printout of, let's see if we can find it. It's somewhere, I don't know where it is, but a printout of my book. I just haven't like pushed it over the edge yet. Like we're doing a launch in about a week and a half or sorry, a month and a half. But you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Like, like you can just start interviewing people really darn fast. No obligation. You don't need a group. They're just talking shop with you. You're learning. I interviewed the senior vice president of Ultra Marketing. Ultra, the, the company that does Ultra, I interviewed the senior vice president. All I did was ask. And I think you guys can do the same again and again and again and again. And I really hope that this 15 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute lesson is where you change the way you approach prospecting or selling or fulfillment and really made you real really makes you realize that you can <laughs> you can literally be massively successful if you just actively try to not screw people over just just don't screw people over right and the way people will learn about you if if you're that person where you're like you're trying not to screw people over and if you're interested in like connecting with a real life person that reads about you consumes information about you becomes interested in working with you this is your challenge right here like they they are looking in a different direction they're never looking at you They've got their own method and 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 manner and and communication. Like like, there's still financial uh, financial industry experts, investment bankers that are doing a half million a year salary cash after taxes in their pocket. If you want to reach them, you really got to talk to the Wall Street Journal. No other way around it. Or MSNBC or CNBC um, or uh, Zero Hedge, right? Um, or go to the conference. Or uh, send them a care package. Or listen. Or or go to the podcasts where they're listening. You see what I mean? Like, like no matter what market you're targeting, the attention is now split. That's just a function of the internet. And either you can be unsuccessful and frustrated and angry trying to hit every single one or simply do what Apple does and get leveraged. And the easiest thing to leverage is a 60 minute interview. And what's even cooler is it builds a culture and a tribe worth being part of like this one right here. So we're going to move into Q&A. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, or ideas, uh, now is the time. Feel free to ask. Uh, this is specifically time that I devote to you. And I, I can't you know, handle the, the 500 PMs a day. So I just say, like, come on the lunch and learn. Otherwise, I can't best service you. So now is the time and now is the opportunity. So we're going to move into Q&A. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, the questions that you put in the chat and drop them in here and do my best to give you an honest and real answer. Um, sometimes like PMing back and forth, like it's just bad. Um, so here we are, let's do this. Um, low Paul says, preach. You got it. My man, um, Henry Burton, who just joined the IC and $1,500 client. What's going on? My buddy, uh, Robert Vika, what's going on? We got to meet later today or tomorrow. Uh, Jonathan Yoni Alpert, uh, who just went from zero to $6,400 a month or something like that in less than 60 days. What's going on, buddy? Bobby Fish, you're part of the IC. Chris Foyce, Force. Jerome Newman, Mel Hope, based out of Miami. Uh, Chiwi Hung, ah, dude, I'm sorry. Uh, Steven, what's going on? How you doing? Christian Ducks, Daniel Sha. God, guys, come on. Like, I'm a corn-fed white boy. Everybody thinks I'm from Chicago. I can't deal with these names, guys. Like, I'm so sorry, but like, I'm trying to. Uh, Pascal says, powerful stuff. Do you teach that in the IC? I do. Um, the IC is always being updated with the next best thing. And it ends up being this kind of like encyclopedia of like everything that will take you from freshman to, I think now we're covering like the end of sophomore or junior year of your Facebook ads agency journey. Um, it's really darn cool. Um, and I really think it's the best bang for the buck and a shameless plug. Like I built it. I think it's awesome. Um, it's damn good too. Um, so if you're interested, just hashtag IC, I'll have Brett reach out to you. Um, Zaka says, uh, what softwares are you using for these interviews? Zoom, uh, things like that. So I use BeLive. That's what we're on right now. Um, I've heard people talk about StreamYard. Um, I don't really like Zoom the way I expect because it really feels like a tiny box. I don't know why like the tiny attic type feeling isn't like my cup of tea. You know what I mean? Um, we've also done this setup right here and I'm going to open up another window and show you. Um, this is pretty darn cool. One moment, let me bring it up. I have to log into Kajabi and show you as an example. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have enough cash to like have a studio, um, which is just right over there in the other room and people come in. It's so fucking cool. Like, like putting a face to the name and all that. Um, and here is another example of the studio setup. 
This is with Alex Shalinsky, who's doing POD Live, the end of February, which is cool. So Brandon Becker built the studio. He gets all the credit. That's Alex Shalinsky on the left. Um, there's a couple of people off screen, but that's like the look and feel. Um, I forget the name of the uh, reporter that has this type of setup, Charlie Rose, sorry. Um, and so he really wanted to have something that like, like had an in-depth conversation. But every single other interview that I've done has simply been be live and things like that. Um, and you guys have access to all of these interviews. If you simply go into the description of the group, you have access to every single one of them. This, this by the way, this course is like just this free interview series is well worth five to six thousand dollars. Like it's mind blowing. Um, there are people that have launched agencies simply from watching these interviews, which is really darn cool. Um, I mean, you can see it again and again. Uh, some advantages and expert secrets, by the way, if you're doing interviews, just have uh, a couple bullet points. And now it's much easier to clip them um, and keep the conversation on track. Uh, it, it's really darn cool. Um, so yeah, so to answer your question, I almost always use uh, Be Live. Some people have said StreamYard, but I don't know if that's like what we're talking about. And I've just never really found culturally my experience with Zoom is like inspiring and motivating and things like that. So I hope that answers your question. Let it, let's see what else we got. Um, Hassan says, uh, first time here, loving the value. I appreciate it very much. Um, thank you, Vutch. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Daniel says, it feels like the 64 pieces of content by Gary V, man with two N's and four dots and exclamation point. It's totally possible. Um, I don't follow Gary V as much as I should. Um, I, I don't know, like the... I feel like I'm post Gary V for some reason. Um, that's not really fair to say. I just feel that way. Um, but yeah, it's totally possible that he's uh, really turned this idea into something that's doable. I'm not really sure. Um, maybe it's possible. Who knows? Uh, uh, Daniel says, I get so much value in this group. Thanks to all. I appreciate that very much. If you're going to Funnel Hacking Live in Nashville, um, I'd be happy to see you guys and meet up and all that fun stuff. We are doing a, a, a meetup. It's a paid ticketed event because we have to buy out the whole bar uh, it is, I think, Tuesday night. Um, I'm going to tag Steph. Steph signs. Can you link the event for funnel hacking? Um, yeah, it's a ticket event because we had to buy out the whole bar. But it'll be pretty darn cool to put a face and name and all that fun stuff. Um, and we are doing AskCon, uh, which is a strange name. In about six months, more information on that is coming out later. Uh, Howard says... Oops, sorry. If you're marketing to prospective clients, doesn't featuring other experts divert authority from us other experts? I don't think so. And even if it does, that's really not that big of a problem because culturally and socially, like when you're talking to an expert, just through having a conversation, you become better at it. So it's really a shortcut to your own success, number one. Number two, if, if somebody comes to you and says, I have a problem and you cannot service them, uh, you should be fair to say like, look, I can't solve your problem, but I know somebody who can. And you've really built out a network of experts within like 30 or 60 or 90 days, doing an interview once a week for six months, that's 25 experts. And you can be the person that, pass off, that passes off business. You're just prospecting and then you're allocating to your fulfillment partners very, very quickly. And I don't think you actually lose expertise by interviewing experts the same way Oprah Winfrey built a billion dollar business just interviewing other people. You know what I mean? And so I don't think that you lose authority. I think you gain authority, number one. Number two, even if you did, that's okay. And number three, you can actually better serve clients by connecting with fulfillment partners and just getting your referral fee, which is, I don't know why I did karate noises. Your referral fee, noises, uh, karate hand motions. You can get your referral fee and be totally honest and say like, hey, I just want to let you know I'm connected you to the number one guy when it comes to dental implant marketing. If you guys do decide to do business, I've worked at a referral fee with him that will take out of his cut, not yours. If you do manage to work with him, I just want to let you know that I'll be getting a fair compensation. Is that okay? And I say, yeah, of course, no big deal. Awesome. And so what you've done is, is you found an expert. You've gotten better at your knowledge. Uh, if you can't service the account, uh, you can find somebody who can do it better. And you're in front of everybody that you want to target anyway. So I want to say, Howard, no, not at all. Uh, Pascal says, uh, if you charged rent there, I pay it. I appreciate that a lot, my man. Uh, Joshua says, if you're just starting out, Joshua's part of the IC. Congratulations on landing. I think your third client at 1200, something like that. Joshua says, if you're just starting out, what point is worth your time to go for and start this strategy? So Joshua, since you already have clients, you can do an interesting 
uh, uh, ethical switcheroo. Um, and so what can happen is you can say, hey, Mr. Johnson, I'm super happy you're getting your clients. I'm super happy you're getting results. Can we spend some time on the phone and go over some interesting points, what it was like working with me before, what it was like working after and things like that. And very quickly, you get like a, um, a, a 60 minute testimonial really darn fast. So as a side note, now that you've that you jogged my memory, that's a very easy way of getting like an awesome series of testimonial videos. It's not 60 minutes of being like 20 minutes, but you know what I mean? That's number one. Number two is once you've managed to get your head above water, which is usually like at the eight to 10 K a month mark, you now have the, the managerial and emotional financial bandwidth to cut out, carve out time in your day and change up your prospecting engine. This is a prospecting engine strategy because you're simply doing all this fun stuff as leverage, right? So once you're like around the 10K a month mark, when you can pay your bills and you're not freaking out, you don't have gray hair, you're like, all right, at least I got food on the table and my wife isn't gonna be angry at me anymore. Now we can start carving out an hour a week and doing these types of conversations. And, and it becomes worth your time to do this strategy. Uh, Carl says, is there a way to automate this leverage method of slicing distributed content? Carl, you and I wish there was. Like, I genuinely wish there was a way to automate it. And right now, instead of automating, um, all I'm doing is paying people to do it for me. And I don't mean just like, copying the audio track from my podcast or from my interviews and put into a podcast. I don't mean that. What I mean is chopping up the letterbox interviews. What I mean is taking the the conversation that I had on uh, the, the interview show and then turning it into a text uh, based wording that makes sense, right? Like, so that type of stuff, not the um, easy stuff that's a uh, software, but I mean like the hard stuff, like I have to pay people to do it. Like I'm paying X dollars per hour to have somebody just go through the interviews and chop it up and, and turn them into letterbox videos. I'm paying somebody X dollars per hour to chop up the interviews, or sorry, to take the interviews and put them into a book format, things like that. But honestly, it's like not as expensive as you'd expect and it's super useful and um, it's pretty damn cool. I mean, imagine if like every single future client of yours saw you interviewing the number one person in their space, pulling out their secrets and saying, yes, I understand your problems, I can solve this problem for you. Like that's absolutely massive. So there really isn't a way an aut to automate the leverageable parts of it um, and, and slicing up and distributing content other than the tools out there. But so much of it is just still manual that you have to pay somebody to like to do it for you. Uh, Bobby Fisher says, uh, can we also put out value videos about marketing and use it the same way as your interviews for leverage and no like and trust? Yes, you can actually. Um, I've been using my own uh, videos that I shot, I think a year and a half ago. And if you're a carpet cleaner or a dentist, like you're seeing these ads right now. Um, and I use these to get carpet cleaners paying, I pay Facebook like $2 and I get a name, number, an email from a carpet cleaner, which is cool. Um, I'll show you what I mean right now. It'll just take way too long because of ads manager. One moment. I call them the, yeah, I've seen your stuff ads, which is so funny because that's exactly what like people tell me. Uh, carpet cleaners, yeah, I've seen your stuff. So let me go ahead and bring that as an example right here. So these are, I don't know if value videos is the right term, but these are videos, Bobby, that I've shot. Um, and they're like way too professional and they're really darn awesome. And so this is it right here. Um, Hey, carpet cleaners have a bunch of old customers that haven't paid you money in 30, 90 days. Do these three things. And by the way, here's the VSL if you want to pay me money. That's it. So the headlines and all that. And I've got like five or six of them that I just run and put $5 a day into. And when I'm on the phone with the, with the carpet cleaners, I go, yeah, I saw the video. Like you're talking about like old customers. How do I get that? I'm like, I explained it to you in the video, but whatever, right? So yes, it's doable. Um, but I don't want to say like when you're using the term value video, Bobby, I think what you mean is like, hey, Mr. Johnson, uh, I saw that you didn't have a pixel on your site, so you should install it. So I don't think you can use that, but you can use what I just showed you. Uh, Zaka says, I've been watching those interviews, man. They are gold. I appreciate that very much. Put a lot of effort into it. Do you get access to all the single master classes you sell if you remember the IC? Yes, you do, Zaka. Uh, you get every single master class um, until I decide otherwise. But so far, like I've never actually decided against it. Um, you do get every single master class from now until the end of 
I can't say time because my lawyer would be angry at me until like whenever I decide otherwise. Um, but I mean, people have been in the IC for like, I don't know, two years now and they're still getting me master classes for free, which like, it's like, come on, man. But I'm happy for them, right? I, I want them to be massively successful. So Zaka, the answer is yes. Uh, Pascal says, uh, where did you say we can find the Kajabi site? So Pascal, uh, let me just screenshot it for you right here. Um, if you go into like the main page of the group or something like that. So if you go here, let me get it for you. Duplicate. So Pascal, if you go to, come on, God, son of a, okay. So if you go here, uh, where it says description, click see more and you can see the want the interview series or want the transcript. So you can experience what I mean by leverageable content. Uh, you can just click that and you'll have access to everything that you expect very, very quickly. Uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, Pascal says, do you teach your SOP for your prospecting engine exclusive in the IC? Yes. So we've got six different types of prospecting engines that you can get up and running in less than 36 hours. Um, we're introducing two more. Uh, which will be really darn cool. Um, not taught by me, but taught by people that are much smarter than me. Hint, I've interviewed them first. See what I mean? Um, and I'm using that now to get carpet cleaners. Hence, I hate carpet cleaners. I'm gonna be switching niches really darn fast. Um, but yeah, so we definitely teach how to uh, prospecting, set up your prospecting engine fast. Um, Joshua Brummel landed three deals at $1,200 really darn fast using this prospecting engine. Uh, Jerry the Red apparently just closed a $2,000 deal. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. Jerry's been in the IC for like two years now, which is darn cool. Um, so to answer your question, Pascal, is, um, yes. And if you want uh, Brett to message you, just hashtag IC. Uh, Daniel says, any final suggestions for automating, strengthening the prospecting engine after I get a bit of the interviews done? Um, so Daniel, your question is really like, it's, it's twofold. So here's what I mean. So this, by the way, is like, you should really only be doing this leverageable strategy after your prospecting engine is up and running, not beforehand. This is not replace your prospecting engine. This is really like a supplement to your prospecting engine. So once you've got people that are signing up, opting in, you've got sales up and running, then once you're above 10 K a month, you can start doing this type of stuff to get more deals, to increase the amount that people spend with you to increase the time that they do spend with you to build your expertise, get people comfortable spending more money with you. And very quickly, you can go from like 1200 a month to, to 1800 a month without doing anything else. Simply by saying, yo, we've got this interesting strategy. I learned from Dr. Johnson over on West Philadelphia. It's just like you, it can cost you an extra $500 a month to implement this type of automatic follow-up system. Are you interested? Yes, right. So you can do that, but uh, this is not a replacement for your prospecting engine. Your prospecting engine should be up and running and then this adds to it. Once your prospecting engine is up and running, you can literally just start interviewing people that are experts in the group, uh, running them as ads, uh, pulling a D7 list and just running like the interviews and saying, if you're interested in learning more, click here. You've got a name, number, and email for $2.50 each, right? So that's totally doable. You can even like run a book funnel, just like Russell Brunson does and say like, hey, would you like to pay me more money? Um, sure, that'd be great, awesome, uh, great. So pay me even more money, awesome, even great. So like it, it's totally doable. But Pascal, like I'm, I'm trying to like, or sorry, Daniel, I'm trying to read deeper into your question. If you are not above 10K a month, do not do this strategy. Like th this will distract you and not add to it. You have to get your prospecting engine up and running first, uh, get 10K a month, and then you can do this fun stuff to uh, target deeper um, and have more prospecting parts and have a book funnel and have an interview series and all that fun stuff. Uh, Jerry the Red. Uh, says, I just closed a $2,000 deal. Yay, Jerry. Well done. Well fucking done. Good job. Uh, Sam says, do you always use Ads Manager uh, or do you use Facebook Business Manager? Any thoughts of using one or the other? So you, so you log into your Business Manager and then you get into Ads Manager. I think what you're doing is you're asking a deeper question, which is, do you include ad spend or not? I, I just include ad spend and I charge X number of dollars per month. Um, it just seems to work really well, especially if you're, position correctly of using like the Jeff Lopez strategy and stuff like that. Um, but then there's like Sean Manaher that's like, nah, I'm just going to charge a flat rate. Steph signs charges a flat rate. Um, either way, what I end up doing is if I, if I include ad spend, I make a separate ad account under my own ads manager. It says a client's name. So it's still compliant. Then I pay with my credit card. 
if I don't include ad spend, I have to use their business manager. So like, that's really just part of the strategy. Um, Michael Ogden. Michael says, uh, hey, Jeff, nice info. I work as a marketer in e-commerce fashion company. Do you have any tips for me to scale? I have ROAS of 10 to 15. The problem is it's collecting changes every week. You know, Michael, I wish I was better at e-commerce. I suck at e-commerce. It's literally the worst thing in the world for me. I hate it so much. Like I, the, the worst part of my day is staring at ads manager and looking at charts and graphs. I did it for two years as a Fortune 50 consultant. Oh, it's horrible. So I don't want to even begin to answer this question incorrectly other than just ask the group. And I'm pretty sure somebody who, who does have something to sell uh, can help you figure it out. You should be willing to pay somebody for their time. Like, like once you start saying like, hey guys, I've got X number of dollars. Who's the smartest person I can talk to? You'll get so much further. So I can't answer your question because I don't know e-commerce at all whatsoever. So I hope I point you the right direction. Just ask the group and that's it. Um, so yeah, we're coming up about eight minutes or so from now. Um, and then we'll bring the sucker to a close. Uh, but in the meantime, just kind of reiterate, uh, the challenge is that if you're trying to target a real life customer who reads and consumes, and you want them to be interested in working with you, there's a million different ways. And if you're missing one of those, you aren't really employing that omni channel strategy, that billion dollar businesses use to get big and stay big. Like, you, I mean, how many times have you seen a Facebook ad and then immediately bought from it? Probably not going to happen versus how many times did you hear about Tesla and Apple and Microsoft. And then finally you woke up and said, oh, I'm going to buy this stuff, right? Like the omni-channel strategy works because you end up with a, a conversation that the client has, that your target client has with somebody who knows your stuff. Like, like that's why Kim Kardashian is successful. She's everywhere. Like I don't have to explain to you what Kim Kardashian does or is, even though nobody really knows what she does. But like this omni-channel strategy works. The problem is everybody's trying to do custom when they should be doing leveraged. The easiest thing to do is just start doing 60 minute interviews. I mean, you guys have been on the receiving end of it. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely like lifting up my skirt on here, but you know exactly what I mean. Like this is doable and this makes a lot of effing sense. Um, let's see what else we got going on here. We've got Justin Kennison, what's going on? Angel Pichardo, what's going on? Uh, we've got uh, Francisco Domino, Lyle Horst, how you doing, sir? Lyle's not going to funnel hacking. Neither am I, I'm just gonna be hanging out in the area and just saying hi and all that fun stuff. Uh, John says, duplicate. How do you handle clients on budget when it comes to actual creator for the ads? So John, the challenge in the beginning is that like you haven't pre conquered this objective objection or, or done it from the beginning. So my clients just say, Jeff, you figured out. And the reason why I say Jeff, that they can say, Jeff, you figured out is because I present them the plan. And if you're in the IC, this is something that you inherently know how to do. Like people in the IC rarely have this problem when it comes to clients and creatives and all that. Um, this is four out of the seven steps. And, and when you present it as such, clients say, I don't know, you figure it out. Uh, the first part is customer research. The second is a Facebook ad with a act now offer worth breaking a habit over and then targeting and then landing page. Thank you, page notifications, soap opera sequence, stuff like that. In the beginning, what happened is you didn't come in knowing that, or you didn't have a narrative or a thought process or a script that pre-conquered this objection. Instead of having an argument about what the ad looks like, I don't even let that be a discussion point. And this won't make any sense until you see one of my pitch videos, but like I've never been bossed around when it comes to the ad. I'm always the person doing the bossing because I'm not relying on my expertise. Like that's the fundamental reason why they're fighting you is because they're saying I'm the expert or you're the expert and the expert gets to choose. And if you're not coming in higher than them, they will tell you what to do. If you're coming in higher than them, you will tell them what to do. It ends up being this like weird power struggle. And I've never been good with that. So instead of saying that, I say, Mr. Johnson, this is gonna happen. Uh, I'm gonna run customer research. I'm gonna ask your future, current and past customers uh, about their needs, wants, fears and goals when it comes to your product or service. And if we get a critical mass of number answering your question, uh, that's usually between 15 and 30, we can then move forward to the Facebook ad. Uh, are you interested in that? Great. So for customer research, I need, just need a picture of you and your staff as real life human beings so that when people walk in, they see familiar faces, are okay with that? Great. So we now have a precedence of me saying, I'm not the expert, you're not the expert, we're gonna ask the customers what they want. And I have a photo that's real life human beings of them in the front desk so people know who they're talking to, right? 
that has set the stage for me or the custom research to dictate the creative. I'll bet you dollars or donuts, John, that you're not having that preemptive conversation. Once you start relying on things like customer research, you don't have to have your highest, most important paid person's opinion, which is the hippo, or have a power struggle about who's more important. None of that. It's just we're relying on customer research. That's it. Uh, Henry says, uh, what's this Kim Kardashian thing? There's a slide deck, my demo pitch. What the fuck does Kim Kardashian sell? What do you say about this? Yeah, so uh, watch the pitch video. Um, there's about 12 of them. They all use the Kim Kardashian reference. Specifically, it's about uh, soap opera sequences. Specifically, it's about um, not having to worry about... It's in the pitch video. Just watch it. You're good there. Um, I got a boogie off. It's about 12.57 now. I hope this was useful. Um, I, I genuinely think that this has broken your brain and moved you forward. Again, if you're interested in joining the IC, uh, I'm more than happy to have that conversation. Just hashtag IC, Brett will reach out. Um, there's case studies or there's white label case studies. You get to see me pitch, uh, complete tech walkthroughs, how to follow up, how to get a client to pay you money, get a client results, best serve them with real life human beings, how to handle the conversations that John just mentioned. It ends up being like this huge opportunity. Um, and I genuinely believe like the IC is, is probably the best course and the best bang for the buck out there. So again, if you're interested in the IC, um, just hashtag IC and we'll take it from there. Again, leverage. Don't go custom, go leverage. And by the way, you could probably do this as a service for your clients, which would be pretty darn cool, right? Like imagine if like one of your clients is paying you $1,000 a month, you end up having a conversation following one of the scripts in the IC saying like, what's the biggest reason why you're not making more business? Because I'm not an expert. Would you like to figure out, uh, would you like to know how other people just like you're becoming experts in the industry? And then you just charge them for running this program. And now you're not a Facebook ads guy fighting $1,500 a month, but a PR marketing person fighting $10,000 a month, like that type of stuff. So with that, um, I got a boogie off. Uh, go kick some ass, take some names, go make some money. If you're going to Funnel Hacking Live, I will see you there. There's a link in this group chat about the paid event that we're going to. I do have to charge you uh, because we bought out the bar and it costs money. And if you're interested in the IC, just hashtag IC. Everybody, see you later. Bye.